On Thursday, Vice President Kamala Harris spoke at the White House's Accelerating Infrastructure Summit. The event was meant to highlight the positive impact of the bipartisan infrastructure bill that passed about a year ago. As the midterms approach, Democrats have sought to highlight the legislation they have passed since President Biden took office and Democrats won control of both chambers of Congress. The $1.2 trillion infrastructure law, which won the support of 19 Republican senators, including Minority Leader Mitch McConnell, has been a punching bag for conservatives, along with other high-spending bills Biden signed into law. Republicans have blamed extremely high government spending for inflation and a rocky economy. Harris and the White House are attempting to combat those criticisms as Election Day nears. Local level. And um, I also had, had statewide um, office. And the stuff we do here in D.C. will only mean something if it hits the streets of America. And that's where our partnership becomes critical to seeing the plan through. Because it is you at a local level, at a state level, who make it real. And there's so much about what we accomplished that was dependent on the relationship we have because it is you who helped inform our priorities. You gave us the information about what your constituents, about the people that you represent, what they need, what they want, what wasn't working and what was working. And those details matter. Because as the president will tell you, we are very clear. The work that we do is not about a grand gesture or a press conference. It's about it actually impacting the people of America. So I am here to thank you. I'm here to thank you for what you did to help form and inform what we have accomplished. And I am here to thank you for the hard work, the elbow grease that you are putting into making it real. And I've been traveling the country, the president has been traveling the country, and we know what you are doing at a local level and a statewide level. And we hear the feedback about the importance of your work. Um, I was looking just quickly at some of my travel schedules. So for example, I was in Charlotte, North Carolina um, in December of last year, and I toured, there you are, Charlotte in the house, <laughs> and toured a transit facility. And um, I was so inspired by the work that's happening there in terms of manufacturing, in terms of the innovation, um, in terms of the workforce development. And, um, and what we're seeing there, and I, it was with Governor Roy Cooper, um, is, is just innovation at work, jobs at work, union jobs around the country being inspired by this work, apprenticeship programs being resourced and growing because of this work. In Milwaukee, Wisconsin, um, I was there in January, and I met with workers who are removing lead pipes, right, um, in Milwaukee. And we know that in the infrastructure bill, there's $48 million that's going to lead pipe removal. Well, that's not only Wisconsin, in, in, in Michigan, for example. Um, I was just speaking with a group of folks from Michigan here yesterday. Uh, the lead pipe removal piece, is extraordinary because it is the intersection then, the infrastructure work, hits the intersection between infrastructure, yes, but also public health and education. Because you think about something like lead pipes, it's a public health issue. Children are drinking toxic water, which is having an impact on their health, but also their capacity to maximize their God-given brain potential because of the impact it has on their ability to learn. So there's so much about the work that we are doing that, yes, it's about roads and bridges. It's about public transit. It's about investing in innovations such as electric vehicles, electric school buses. But it really does touch on so many of the facets of American life, including public health issues, including education issues, including productivity and economic productivity. Because of course, if the American worker can't get to where they need to go in an efficient way, that slows down our productivity. So therein lies the intersection between the work you are doing and so many aspects of life that may not come to mind when we think about infrastructure, but are directly impacted. So I'm here to thank you all. And um, we intend with this law and the rollout of it to engage leaders at every level 
elected leaders, of course, at the local and statewide level, but community leaders, organizations. This is also about empowering folks because we know that when they are active in their level of participation, we all benefit. So with that, I thank you all for what you have done to get us to this point. But no patting ourselves on the back yet. <laughs> um, this is just the next phase of, yes, great progress. It's the next phase where we ensure that the benefits that we intend actually hit the streets of America. And with that, I thank you all. Be well. Thank you. Oh, my God. Madam Vice President, thank you so much for those inspiring words. And as we come uh, to the close, let me just again thank all of our panelists for joining us today. Of course, none of this is possible without the staffs that work for all of us who have done an unbelievable job of getting us to where we need to be and helping us uh, stay focused. As the Vice President said, you know, this is really an imperative for the country. We have a once-in-a-generation opportunity. All of you who are the experts, the folks that do the X's and O's that have been on the ground, John, the ones that have had those near-death experiences when, <laughs> when you think about projects and are they coming out of the ground, the folks that really understand, you know, how we're gonna, how we're gonna lay the rail, how we're gonna build the airports, how we're gonna get the bridge, how we're gonna retrofit the pipes, how we're actually gonna make this happen. It's not really that easy. Uh, it's easy to talk about, it's easy to complain about, I loved your statement about let's camp, camp let's kind of tamp down the optimism. Optimism is important, but realism is better. Um, and there's no reason why we shouldn't run to the problems. America uh, has gotten out of the habit of building big things together and building big things well. We have to learn how to do that again. But the president has challenged us. The president has given an opportunity. The president has said that there's uh, nothing impossible in America when we get together and we actually make that happen. But it requires, someone said earlier, horizontal, verti horizontal and vertical integration, federal, state, local, all across, all the way down, everybody in the team pulling together. And we can build it faster. We can build it better. We can build it stronger if we stay on time, on task, and on budget. That's what this is about. And so when we see a problem, we fix a problem. When we need to find innovation, we innovate. When we find a way, we either make one or we find one. And that's the way that we're going to make this happen. And so I want to thank you for all the work that you've done. I want to thank everybody who's worked on this accelerating project. We want to go faster. We want to go better. We want to build stronger. And as the president said, we want to build a better America. So to everybody online, thank you all for uh, looking at us, watching us. Go uh, to buildbackbetter.gov, and we'll be ready to go. Thank you so much. Bye-bye. <laughs>